All right, so people have been looking at data on flat screens for a long time. Is there anyone in the room who's not used a plot in a spreadsheet or a business intelligence tool? I'm pretty sure most of us have at this point. Uh, one of the classic problems with that approach, plots on a flat screen let you compare a few things. What you place on the X versus Y axis, what you place as perhaps size or, or color of data point. The reality is that modern data has a lot more to tell you. There are many more features of modern data sets. This is why AI and machine learning are so popular, but also bring a number of problems. Uh, so what we've done is pioneered a way of expanding perspective across a lot of features of a data set. Uh, my background is in data analytics. I don't come to uh, augmented and virtual reality. I, Come at this from more of a, a data and data analytics perspective. Uh, outside, you'll find uh, Andrew and Aaron and I uh, will have the Magic Leap device, and you'll be able to experience some of this hands on as well. We have a few of those uh, just outside at the table. So let's think about what is done in two dimensions. So on the left of the screen, you see a, a familiar game. You think you're playing tic tac toe. If you're red, you think you've won. Reality is almost always more complex than that. And on the right, obviously, you see that the game was not tic-tac-toe and nobody won. When you think of a traditional data set, there are so many different combinations of these columns that somebody would have to look through or not look through and miss really important aspects. Uh, ask Andrew outside about how he uh, determined a, a machine learning bias in a, di a diabetes diagnostic model when you talk with him. Um, so in this case, and we support up to 18 dimensions, it, what it does is it takes what would be the equivalent of 3,060 separate plots on a dashboard like you're used to looking at and it distills it all down to one thing you can actually get your head around. If you could play the video, please. Go to stocks at the S&P 500. You have price earnings displayed on the x-axis. Price book is displayed as color from blue to green. Dividend yield is shown on the y-axis, and market capitalization is shown as the size of each data point. So far, it's a standard scatter plot. Let's do more, a lot more. We've just added the price sales ratio on the Z axis. Now as a portfolio manager looking for bargains, you'd be looking for stocks that are blue or low price book toward the front or low price sales and toward the left or low price earnings. From this perspective, AA looks like a great bargain stock, but there are many considerations that go into picking stocks. We've just added earnings per share as opacity the more solid stocks have a more solid earnings per share. The thinner ones have very weak earnings per share. Notice how AA has almost completely disappeared. This added perspective improves the quality of the decisions that you make. You can add more features of the data set. For example, you'll notice some of the stocks are now glowing. That here is reflecting a higher EBITDA. You're now seeing seven dimensions of data in this intuitively unified view. It's equivalent to looking at these 35 unique scatter plots. The same perspective given here is also given over here in a more intuitive, easy to approach way. Make better decisions, tell impactful data stories, gain situational awareness, all with immersion analytics. So we found that uh, people can understand a fair bit. We have tablet versions, mobile phone based version of, of this platform. And people can understand about eight or nine dimensions from a, from a touch screen interface, which is good. It's, it's better than the state of the art in business intelligence and analytics today. Uh, but what we found is that, and there are a host of really interesting properties of having the content physically with you. So uh, actually, Dr. Jacqueline Snow, who spoke here a few years ago, uh, her lab has uh, done some work using functional MRI to actually compare what happens in the brain when you're looking at a physical object versus a flat photograph of the same. And they found that it was completely different neurological pathways that were being used, expanded, 
use of neurology. And we believe that explains or partially explains why we're seeing some of the results we do. Uh, so a platform to do this kind of thing, obviously you need to get data from somewhere, right? So most people are using an enterprise business intelligence tool. Uh, we, we integrate with leading business intelligence tools. I'll show how that works in a moment uh, from the perspective of a data analyst or business analyst. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum are data scientists. So these are folks who are probably using Python or, or MATLAB and need, the, need a way to be able to to understand the, uh, the content that they're building machine learning models or running artificial intelligence on. So bringing the data in, um, it can be as simple as a Google Sheet, it could be as complex as uh, Python scripts to do something very innovative with machine learning. Uh, we've talked of expanding perspective and analyzing. Uh, it's also important to have the ability to collaborate. So across many different devices, the ability to either be in the same location or different locations and, and have the same perspective and shared experience of, of the immersive data. And, and finally, uh, one of the demonstrations you can try hands-on um, it turns out that once you find these insights, I mean, who would think it? Not everyone has these devices yet, so you have to find a way to communicate it to people using flat screens, traditional media. Uh, so what we found is it's a very effective uh, from, a, from a device to create video, call out certain things in that video, and then have people uh, hear your data story. You can even post them on YouTube. So we found that's a really effective way, effectively reports become videos. So how does this work in an enterprise? I'll give an example. Uh, Click is one of our partners. Uh, so in Visualizer, which many of you will try outside, uh, from data, you go to ClickSense, enter a server address and log in, just like you would for that kind of enterprise system. You pick a data set. Within the data set on the right, you pick the features and maybe many or all of the features that you're interested in seeing. Once you've done that, in Visualizer, you click a few buttons to, for each of the features of your data set or columns of, of that table, if you will, you click Add and you pick. These are effectively so they're special effects. The, the variance of intensity of each of them is used as an additional axis. So you add additional axes for as uh, up to 18 of the data values. Once you've done that, you're presented with a visualization. There's a much longer backstory to this one, but this uh, data set came from the retail analytics space. And fundamentally, based on the idea of improving profit margins, so the, the standard narrative in this business intelligence platform when they do their demos is about pricing of products and placement of products trying to improve profit margin. But when we added many more features of the data set in this way, uh, we actually found that some of the very high inventory products, uh, areas where you, you're keeping a large amount of inventory, and this was a grocery chain, um, they were actually very low margin, you're not selling very many of them, and they spoil. You'll see milk is close to the origin, and uh, one of the interesting discoveries there was that by improving inventory, you're actually able to get a, an order of magnitude higher um, profit margin boost. So the, the point here is no one thought to look at that combination of the features of the data set, and then when we do, we find a, a, a breakthrough discovery. Uh, so again, an example with Click, but you can interact with on the right an environment or experience that you're familiar with and have those interactions reflected in the immersive space next to you. Conversely, you can interact from the immersive space and commit those changes. And when we click apply, you'll see that that has resulted in filtering within the traditional business intelligence tool. A lot on the slide, I would say don't, don't actually try to read that slide, I apologize. What's really interesting here is, so there's business intelligence, dashboards, plots. There's AI and machine learning, 
And then there's immersive. And why are these three things very different? So machine learning is great for automation, great for handling large data sets. It also introduces something called model bias. Um, ask Andrew outside about an example of model bias. Um, it, was, it was very impactful in a diabetes diagnostic model. Uh, it's the sort of thing where literally lives could, could have been lost uh, due to a, a, an incorrect diagnosis. Other problems are non-stationary. So if you think about cybersecurity, uh, what will happen is attacks on a network will be unique. So you'll have uh, someone come up with a new uh, hack or attack, and it completely changes the rules of the game in an unpredictable way. Machine learning cannot cope with these kinds of problems. In immersive space, you can add more features of the data set. You can find things that weren't codified in the data set, but that you know through just common sense. And you can bring those into the equation as well. So it's very powerful for hypothesis generation and discovery. So there are a number of visualization engines or types. Uh, this works with existing data systems, uh, dimensional bar charts in the bottom left, graph data. I would recommend try the demo in the headset. Graphs on a flat screen are pretty tough to understand, but in a headset they work really well. In the upper right, uh, this is a, a way of viewing time series data that really benefits from the, the spatial experience. Um, on the, yeah, on the bottom right, uh, actually uh, at the table, we'll be happy to give you a demo of this, an analysis of the mortgage market. Uh, spoiler alert, we're getting dangerously close to how things looked in 2006 across a, a wide array of factors. So it, it's the sort of thing that most people would miss until you can stitch all of the pieces together. All right, thank you very much.